Good morning, good morning, or whatever time you're catching the replay. Keisha Johnson here. Thank you so much for catching the replay. If you can be so kind and type in hashtag replay so I will know that you are watching. And if you're tuning in to any of my broadcasts for the very first time, go ahead and type a number one in the comments so I can welcome you. I'm so glad that you are here. Again, my name is Keisha Johnson, and by the grace of God, you can find us here every Monday through Friday at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Good morning, Danielle. As you all are coming in, I came on a few minutes early today. As you all are coming in, come on and check in and say, I'm here and let us know where you're tuning in from. And if you haven't already, make sure that you've anointed your hands, right? And what do we say? My hands are blessed. Everything that I touch is blessed. Everything that I touch prospers. Everything that I touch multiplies. Everything I touch. Good morning, Messeret. Everything I touch turns to gold. Amen. These blessed, oily, anointed hands will lay hands on the sick. They will be healed and they will recover. In Jesus' name, amen. And go ahead and share the broadcast. So I came on a few minutes early. Uh, so come on in and we'll get started in just a moment. I need to go and grab my water. So grab your water, grab your Bibles, grab your journals, grab everything you need. And I'll be right back. Here we go. Good morning, y'all. Come on in. Let me go ahead and grab all of my stuff. Good morning, good morning. I'll be right back, y'all. Good morning, good morning everyone. Great morning, so good to see you all. Come on in. Great morning everyone, so good to see you all. Say, there is no other friend like you, Jesus. No other friend. Amen. You, Jesus. Great morning, everyone. Y'all type in the comments, hashtag, I will read my Bible if y'all are ready. <laughs> Still, still, not still, still. There's no other friend like you. Good morning. All right, let's get started. Let's drop some light bulbs in the comments if you are ready. Drop the light bulb emojis in the comments if you are ready to dive into God's word. So again, I am so glad you all are here. I came on just a few minutes early uh, to give you all time to come on in and get settled. And I grabbed everything that I need. And we are ready to rock and roll. So if you haven't already, 
I have so much stuff going on here. <laughs> if you haven't already, go ahead and type at least one thing in the comments that you are thankful for, and we will go ahead and dive in. So, Father, we honor you. Father, we love you. Father, we bless you. There we go. You are God, and you are good in every way there is to be good, and we just say thank you. We thank you for being a kind and loving father. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, God, for protecting us through the night from things we have no idea you protected us from. We thank you. Y'all type that in the comments. God, I thank you because we have no idea, right, of the things that are going on around us when we're sleeping even now. And we thank God for his protection, right? We thank him for his preservation. We thank him for his divine preservation. Y'all type that in the comments. God, I thank you for your divine preservation. We are so thankful and so grateful for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. So remember, um, this is trying to load here, um, the audio. So remember, as we are reading and listening, right, we are actively reading and actively listening. We're looking for confessions, declarations, prayer points. Um, and you all, as those things stand out to you, you can begin to type them in the comments as we are listening, or you can wait. Okay, here we go. Or you can wait until after we are done um, during our family chat. And so if you're new here during our family chat, we have the first part of the hour, we are reading and listening. The second part of the hour, we're usually sharing our takeaways and what we call a family chat to help lead us into our time of personal devotion. Because yesterday we, we were reminded, right, that it takes uh, discipline and devotion to grow. Y'all type discipline and devotion. Hi, Carol, it was so nice talking to you yesterday. I talked to quite a few people yesterday. Um, mm, yeah, by eight o'clock, by my last call, I, had a, I always have breaks in between, but by that last call, I was like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done talking. Um, what was I saying? Uh, that it takes discipline and desire to grow. Well, discipline and desire and devotion, I guess I should say. Discipline and devotion. And so it's so important that we have this time of morning devotion. And then we also have our times of personal devotion, devotion to God. So, uh, yes, all the time. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your word. Amen. Yes, discipline and devotion. Discipline and devotion. Discipline and devotion. So let's go ahead and dive in. It looks like we are ready to go. Um, hang on, hang on. Are we ready? Are we ready? Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, I think we're ready for real now. Okay, here we go. If the volume is good, type Volume a number, number two for me so I can see. Our Old Testament reading today or if I need to turn it up, Jeremiah, turn it down. Chapter 35, verse 1, go through chapter 36, verse 32. We'll see that the founder of the Rechabite family Let me know if the volume is Jehu okay. in removing Baal worship from the land. So they Thank had you a so much. Heritage. You are so faithful. When the Babylonian army moved in, the Rechabites you, had to abandon their nomadic way of life and enter it's Jerusalem for okay. safety. They abandoned their tents, but they did not abandon their standards. Mm. Even though they were in the house of the Lord with the prophet of the Lord, they refused to drink wine. The Rechabites did not ask others to agree with their tradition, but they would not violate it themselves. They were a loyal Say, friend. I will not abandon my standards. Their tradition is not necessarily bad. Unless it is contradicted by or substituted for God's truth. You may not agree with the tradition of others. Good morning, Patricia. But are you as devoted to God's word as they are to is their Is this your traditions? first live? The Jews refused to obey the very law of God. But the Rechabites obeyed human traditions. What an indictment against the Jews who claimed to know the true God. Is it an indictment against us today? In Jeremiah chapter 36, we'll read about God's word written. Unlike any other book, the Bible is God's word, inspired by the Spirit of God. Therefore, it can be trusted, and it must be obeyed. Y'all say the word can be trusted. We'll read about God's word announced. God uses human instruments to declare his divine word to men. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And we'll read about God's word destroyed. The king should have been copying the law for himself and heeding its message. 
Instead, he destroyed what Jeremiah had spoken. It's right and here. Baruch had written. You can try to destroy the Bible, but you will fail. <coughs> and we'll read about God's word preserved. The king and his family are gone and would be forgotten were it not for the book he tried to destroy. <coughs> God's word will endure. Psalm 119, verse 89 says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. Yeah. And then, of course, in Matthew chapter 24, verse 35, the oh, word says, Heaven go. and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. So you away. usually catch the replay. And with that, let's begin today's reading in the Old Testament. October 20th, Jeremiah chapter 35, verse 1, through chapter 36, verse 32. Tasty. This is the message the Lord gave Jeremiah when Let's drop some light bulbs in the comments. was king of Judah. Go to the settlement where the families of the Rechabites live and invite them to the Lord's temple. Take them into one of the inner rooms and offer them some wine. So I went to see Jehazaniah, son of Jeremiah, and grandson of Abazaniah, and all his brothers and sons, representing all the Rechabite families. I took them to the temple, and we went into the room assigned to the sons of Hanan, son of Igdaliah, a man of God. This room was located next to the one used by the palace officials, directly above the room of Mahasiah, son of Shalom, the temple gatekeeper. I set cups and jugs of wine before them, and invited them to have a drink. But they refused. Say they did not drink no, the wine. Said, we don't drink wine because Jehonadab, son of Rechab, our ancestor, gave us this command. <coughs> you and your descendants must never drink wine and do not build houses or plant crops or vineyards, but always live in tents. Good morning, Darso. If you follow these commands, you will live long, good lives in the land. So we have obeyed him in all these things. We have never had a drink of wine since then, nor have our wives, our sons, or our daughters. We haven't built houses, or owned vineyards, or farms, or planted crops. We have lived in tents, and have fully obeyed all the commands of Jehonadab, our ancestor. But when King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon arrived in this country, we were afraid of the Babylonian and Aramean armies. So we decided to move to Jerusalem. That is why we are here. Then the Lord gave this message to Jeremiah. The Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, Go and say to the people in Judah and Jerusalem, Come and learn a lesson about how to obey me. Hmm. The Rechabites do not drink wine because their ancestor, Jehonadab, told them not to. But I have spoken to you again and again, and you refuse to listen or obey. Hmm. I've sent you prophet after prophet to tell you to turn from your wicked ways and to stop worshiping other gods so that you might live in peace here in the land I gave to you and your ancestors. But you would not listen to me or obey. But they obeyed Jehonadab. The families of Rechab have obeyed their ancestor completely, but you have refused to listen to me. Hmm. Therefore, the Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel, says... Because you refuse to listen or answer when I call, I will send upon Judah and Jerusalem all the disasters I have threatened. Then Jeremiah turned to the Rechabites and said, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. You have obeyed your ancestor Jehonadab in every respect, following all his instructions. Because of this, Jehonadab, son of Rechab, will always have descendants who serve me. I, the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, have spoken. During the fourth year that Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, was king in Judah, the Lord gave this message to Jeremiah. Get a scroll and write down all my messages against Israel, Judah, and the other nations. Begin with the first message back in the days of Josiah and write down every message you have given right up to the present time. Perhaps the people of Judah will repent if they see in writing all the terrible things I have planned for them. Then I will be able to forgive their sins and wrongdoings. 
Say, Lord, forgive my so sins Jeremiah and wrongdoings. Sent for Baruch, son of Neriah, and as Jeremiah dictated, Baruch wrote down all the prophecies that the Lord had given him. Then Jeremiah said to Baruch, I am a prisoner here and unable to go to the temple. So you go to the temple on the next day of fasting and read the messages from the Lord that are on this scroll. On that day, people will be there from all over Judah. Perhaps even yet, they will turn from their evil ways and ask the Lord's forgiveness before it is too late. For the Lord's terrible anger has been pronounced against them. Baruch did as Jeremiah told him and read these messages from the Lord to the people at the temple. This happened on the day of sacred fasting held in late autumn during the fifth year of of the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah. People from all over Judah came to attend the services at the temple on that day. Baruch read Jeremiah's words to all the people from the temple room of Gemariah, Amen. son of Shaphan. Say, I will turn from my this evil ways. This room was just off the upper courtyard of the temple, near the new gate entrance. When Micaiah, son of Gemariah, and grandson of Shaphan heard the messages from the Lord, he went down to the secretary's room in the palace where the administrative officials were meeting. Elishama, the secretary, was there, along with Delaiah, son of Shemaiah, Elnathan, son of Akbor, Gemariah, son of Shaphan, Zedekiah, son of Hananiah, and all the others with official responsibilities. When Micaiah told them about the messages Baruch was reading to the people, the officials sent Jehudai, son of Nephanai, grandson of Shelemiah, and great-grandson of Cushai, to ask Baruch to come and read the messages to them too. So Baruch took the scroll and went to them. Sit down and read the scroll to us, the officials said. And Baruch oh did God. as they requested. By the time Baruch had finished reading, they were badly frightened. We must tell the king what we have heard, they said. But first, tell us... How you got these messages? Did they come directly from Jeremiah? So Baruch explained. Jeremiah dictated them to me word by word, and I wrote down his words with ink on this scroll. You and Jeremiah should both hide, the officials told Baruch. Don't tell anyone where you are. Then the officials left the scroll for safekeeping in the room of Elashama, the secretary, and went to tell the king. The king sent Jehudai to get the scroll. Jehudai brought it from Elashama's room and read it to the king as all his officials stood by. It was late autumn, and the king was in a winterized part of the palace, sitting in front of a fire to keep warm. Whenever Jehudai finished reading three or four columns, the king took his knife and cut off that section of the scroll. He then threw it into the fire, section by section. Literally burned up the, the words. Whole scroll was burned up. Neither the king nor his officials showed any signs of fear or repentance at what they heard. Even when El Nathan, Delahiah, and Gemariah begged the king not to burn the scroll, he wouldn't listen. Then the king commanded his son Jeremiel, Sarariah, son of Azrael, and Shelemiah, son of Abdiel, to arrest Jesus, Baruch and exactly. Jeremiah. But the Lord had hidden them. After the king had burned Jeremiah's scroll, the Lord gave Jeremiah another message. He said, get another scroll and write everything again. We'll do it again. The scroll king Jehoiakim burned. Then say to the king, this is what the Lord says. You burned the scroll because it said the king of Babylon would destroy this land and everything in it. Now this is what the Lord says about King Jehoiakim of Judah. He will have no heirs to sit on the throne of David. His dead body will be thrown out to lie unburied, exposed to hot days and frosty nights. I will punish him and his family and his officials because of their sins. I will pour out on them and on all the people of Judah and Jerusalem all the disasters I promised. Our sin affects others. To my warnings. Then Jeremiah took another scroll and dictated again to his secretary Baruch. He wrote everything that had been on the scroll King Jehoiakim had burned in the fire. Only this time he added much more. Yes, say only this time. 
only this time. <laughs> October 20th. Now, as we turn our attention Said to the reading his, him, of the New Testament, his family, we and his attendants. In the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 5, verses 1 through 25. What causes problems in churches? Often it's people not getting along with each other. Brothers and sisters do not always dwell together in unity, even though that's God's will. Paul suggests that we treat other people the way we would treat members of our own family. If the older people complain about things, deal with them as you would your father or mother, and accept the younger believers as brothers and sisters. This is simply a call to love others as God loves you. Now, not everybody yes, who does. asks for help should receive it. That's right. Charity should begin at home. And church leaders must exercise discernment, lest they create more problems than they solve. Sometimes trouble comes because we believe reports that cannot be verified, or we show partiality, or we make decisions before getting the facts. Hmm. Not every church member has a character as good as his or her reputation, so take care. And with that, we begin today's reading in the New Testament. October 20th, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 1 through 25. Never speak harshly to an older man, but appeal to him respectfully, as though he were your own father. Talk to the younger men as you would to your own brothers. Treat the older women as you would your mother, and treat the younger women with all purity as your own sisters. <laughs> the yes, church Tanya. should care for any widow who has no one else to care for her. But if she has children or grandchildren, their first responsibility is to show godliness at home and repay their parents by taking care of them. This is something that pleases God. Say, I will much. do what pleases God. But a woman who is a true widow, one who is truly alone in this world, has placed her hope in God. Night and day, she asks God for help and spends much time in prayer. But the widow who lives only for pleasure is spiritually dead. Give these instructions to the church so that the widows you support will not be criticized. But those who won't care for their own relatives, especially those living in the same household, have denied what we believe. Such people are worse than unbelievers. A widow who is put on the list for support must be a woman who is at least 60 years old and was faithful to her husband. She must be well respected by everyone because of the good she has done. Has she brought up her children well? Has she been kind to strangers? Has she served other Christians humbly? Has she helped those who are in trouble? Has she always been ready to do good? The younger widows should not be on the list because their physical desires will overpower their devotion to Christ mm -hmm. and they will want to remarry. Then they would be guilty of breaking their previous pledge. Besides, they are likely to become Seems lazy and spend their the time word. gossiping from house to house, getting into other people's business and saying things they shouldn't. <laughs> so I advise these younger widows to marry again, have children, and take care of their own homes. Then the enemy will not be able to say anything against them. For I'm afraid that some of them have already gone astray and now follow Satan. If a Christian woman has relatives who are widows, she must take care of them and not put the responsibility on the church. Then the church can care for widows who are truly alone. Elders who do their work well should be paid well. Have I given the enemy things to say against me? Preaching and teaching. For the scripture says, do not keep an ox from eating as it treads out the grain. And in another place, those who work deserve their pay. Do not listen to complaints against an elder unless there are two or three witnesses to accuse him. Anyone who sins should be rebuked in front of the whole church so that others will have a proper fear of God. I solemnly command you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus and the holy angels to obey these instructions without taking sides or showing special favor to anyone. Never be in a hurry about appointing an elder. Do not 
participate in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. Don't drink only water. You ought to drink a little wine for the sake of your stomach, because you are sick so often. Remember that some people lead sinful lives, and everyone knows they will be judged. But there are others whose sin will not be revealed until later. In the same way, everyone knows how much good some people do. But there are others whose good deeds won't be known until later. There was a lot going on here. <laughs> Psalm 89. It was good. God it was a lot. God made a covenant with David that he would always have a descendant on his throne. And that the Davidic line would rule forever. But Ethan, the Ezraite, had a problem. One of the Davidic kings had been defeated in war and had lost his throne. It seemed to Ethan that God had broken his covenant and that God was not faithful to his people. Faithfulness is a key word in this psalm. God's faithfulness is yes, seen those from generation light to generation among his people, in creation, among the nations, and toward David and his family. Ethan knew all of this because he knew the scriptures. But recent events seem to deny the truthfulness of the covenant and the faithfulness of the Lord. Ethan's problem was caused by spiritual short-sightedness. The ultimate fulfillment of the Davidic covenant is in Jesus Christ, the son of David. And he will reign forever. God's faithfulness does not fail. When Jeremiah viewed the destruction of Jerusalem, he may have felt as Ethan did when the king was defeated and dethroned. Instead of questioning God's faithfulness, Jeremiah reaffirmed it. Great is your faithfulness. Never judge God's faithfulness on the basis of what you see or how you feel. Because his promises do not fail. Psalm 89, verses 14 through 15. His promises do not fail. <laughs> your throne is founded on two strong pillars, righteousness and justice. Unfailing love and truth walk before you as attendants. Happy are those who hear the joyful call to worship, for they will walk in the light of your presence, Lord. They rejoice all day long in your wonderful reputation. They exult in your righteousness. You are their glorious strength. Our power is based on your favor. Yes, our protection comes from the Lord, and he, the Holy One of Israel, has given us our king. You once spoke in a vision to your prophet and said, I have given help to a warrior. I have selected him from the common people to be king. I have found my servant David. I have anointed him with my holy oil. I will steady him. Say my protection comes from the Lord. <laughs> His enemies will not get the best of him, nor will the wicked overpower him. I will beat down his adversaries before him and destroy those who hate him. Yes. My faithfulness and unfailing love will be with him, and he will rise to power because of me. I will extend his rule from the Mediterranean Sea in the west to the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in the east. And he will say to me, You are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will make him my firstborn son, the mightiest king on earth. I will love him and be kind to him forever. My covenant with him will never end. I will preserve an heir for him. His yes. throne will be as endless as the days of heaven. But if his sons forsake my law and fail to walk in my ways, if they do not obey my decrees and fail to keep my commands, then I will punish their sin with the rod, and their disobedience with beating. But I will never stop loving him, nor let my promise to him fail. No, I will not break my covenant. I will not take back a single word I said. I have sworn an uh, oath to David, see. and in my holiness I cannot lie. Let's drop some hearts His for dynasty that. <laughs> will go on forever. His throne is as secure as the sun, as eternal as the moon my faithful witness in the sky I will Proverbs never stop loving him or fail to keep my promise through nor will I break my covenant good news from far away is like cold water to the thirsty
thirsty. If the godly compromise with the wicked, it is like polluting a fountain or muddying a spring. Just as it is not good to eat too much honey, it is not good for people to think about all the honors they deserve. Y'all say, I will not compromise with the wicked. I will not compromise with the wicked. Lots of stuff going on today. Lots of good stuff today. As I'm, I'm reading and sitting here, feeling deeply convicted, not condemned, but convicted. Um, as we were reading in First Timothy, it says, show godliness at home. And then we get to the part, and repay their parents, and basically repay your parents for taking care of you. This is something that pleases God. So us repaying and taking care of our parents and repaying them for taking care of us is something that pleases God, right? Y'all type in the comments, it's something that pleases God. And God knows I want to do things to please him, right? And so I was feeling convicted with that, especially with the way uh, my my relationship with, with my mother, very pretty, pretty damaged. And so then, of course, who is that? Someone's up all around. I'm like, who is that? What is who? Who is that? And I don't like that sound. I'm like, what is that noise all over? Um, knowing how my <clears throat> relationship is and has been with my mother since who knows when, I still struggle with that. And so as we're reading that, I'm having this whole full-on conversation with God in my head. Like, Lord, help me. <laughs> help me to figure out how, how to do this. But anyway, uh, for those of you that may be new, Glad you're here. We're moving into our time of personal devotion. I don't have a whole lot at all written down, but definitely have a, a question for you as you lead into your time of personal um, devotion. Yes. And then even just being reminded, you know, what the word of God says that um, we must honor our mother and our father. Basically, we will have long life or live long. So that makes you think, you know, do you want to live long? I want to live long. And so the word of God is what the word of God is. And, you know, we try to make it whatever we want it to be, but it is what it is. And it says what it says, you know, that we take care of our parents. It pleases God. We want to live long, live a long life. I don't know about you, but I want to live a long life. And so just figuring out how to do that when you, um, how do I, say, and then even how do you share your story without like dishonoring it's it's just a lot with that I was just having a conversation about this the other day but anyway that's just for me and my time of personal devotion I don't know if you just you all saw the look on my face I'm like but God but God like having a whole conversation with the Lord as we're reading so that's why I love the word right the word of God convicts us never condemns us right condemnation is from the enemy and just you know, and that's okay. So, um, my question was, <laughs> we read about King Jehoiakim who, re uh, who rejected God's commands by literally, y'all type the word literally, by literally burning the word of God. Um, but it's okay, right? Because it was rewritten and even more was added. But the question is, what areas of scripture do you avoid because they make you uncomfortable? What areas of scripture do you avoid because they make you uncomfortable? And it's funny that, that you know, that, that question, because the, this one area regarding your parents <laughs> is an area, and this is a moment of transparency, that I tend to avoid because it makes me uncomfortable. Um, but I feel like... Uh, Y'all type in the comments, but your time is up, right? Your time of avoiding this area of scripture because it makes you uncomfortable is up, right? Y'all type in the comments, Keisha, your time is up, right? You can no longer avoid this area of scripture because it's time to deal with some things, right? And so this is, in just a moment of transparency, one area I avoid where you read and then you kind of move on to the next thing, right? You read and you're like, oh, okay. But today, I'm like, hmm, he tells me right here that this is what pleases him. And so 
I, I need to deal with this. So that's kind of what I'll be dealing with and working through um, in my time of personal devotion, right? That's right. Y'all type in the comments, your time is up. <laughs> your time of avoiding this area of scripture because it makes you uncomfortable is up. Your time is up. That's right. I needed to see that in the comments. So as I'm reading y'all's comments today, I'll be reminded that my time is up and there are some things that I need to deal with. So that is what I will be dealing with today. So I want you to ask yourself the same question. What area of scripture and it's, do you avoid because it makes you uncomfortable? And type in the comments, my time is up. Today, I'm going to choose to no longer avoid that area and deal with it. Yes, I know, but it was just, I just avoided it. I literally, being honest, it was an area, like I literally, before this morning, would have read that, oh, okay, and kind of just went on and, and continued reading, right? But my time is up. My time of avoiding this area is up. And so um, that was one, one area that stood out to me. So that is the question for today. What area of scripture are you avoiding um, because it makes you uncomfortable? And just say, my time is up. I'm going to deal with this. Um, and so, of course, as we were reading, oh, um, I, I think I told you all. So ah, after all these years, um, I figured out exactly where the commentary was coming from. And it's literally word for word. So as he was sharing, Tom Dooley was sharing the commentary. I was like, wait a minute, I read that yesterday. <laughs> so this is exactly, um, so if you have this book, Walking, uh, not Walking with the Word, that's so funny because God gave me Walking with the Word um, for something uh, with uh, Wellness God's Way, and that was even before I realized what this title was, so I thought that was awesome. Um, so it's not Walking with the Word, this is with the Word. It's on page 521, the commentary um, from, from Jeremiah. And then um, uh, I found the commentary for 1 Timothy. But anyway, I wanted to read something, read a devotional, read the devotional to you all. Listen, we, we, listen, we got lots of resources as we're reading, right? Um, so this, the, the devotional that I'm going to read today is coming from the New Believers Bible. And uh, you all, I've been getting messages daily um, since I shared the one-year Bible um, for new believers. And the question I'm getting is, is this taking the place of the one-year Bible we have? Can y'all type the word no in the comments for me? It does not take the place of it. It is exactly the same reading, the, exactly the same schedule. Um, it just has some added added things like um, a commentary. It has devotionals and just some things um, that a new believer would need to start their um, their journey reading through the Bible. So it's the same exact thing. If I sat down with you all and read from this Bible, it's it's the same exact thing. It just has some added things to it. It has um, commentary. It has a devotional. In the beginning, um, it breaks down um, what each of the, the Bible is. Um, the, a summary of the one-year Bible. It has um, different Bible verses. It has a Bible verse finder. Um, and so I found myself yesterday. I said, okay, Lord, because I don't get easily annoyed. <laughs> I really don't. But I was just like, I was just trying to share the one-year Bible as a resource. And the amount of messages I've been getting, I'm like, okay. And in my mind, I was just like, just don't share anything else that has to do with the one-year Bible so as not to confuse anybody. And then I said, no, <laughs> I can't not share. So I just want to say it's the same, right? It's the same. Y'all type in, it's, the, it's exactly the same. Um, you don't have to buy a new Bible. Then I got, well, why did you tell us to buy the other one, your Bible, for us to, listen, it's exactly the same. Can y'all say it's the same? So don't even worry about it. You do not have to get this Bible. I was just sharing it as a resource because it has great resources in it, okay? Um, so I will read, um, read the devotional. And then I was like, Lord, forgive me. You know, I was like, Lord, forgive me. Because like I said, I don't get easily annoyed about things like that. But I was just like, I was just sharing. It's okay. It's not a big deal. <laughs> I was just sharing the Bible. You don't have to get it. And then I got, well, why would you tell us to buy a Bible? That's $66. I'm like, 
I didn't say buy it. <laughs> I didn't buy it for $66. Don't worry about it. So I just wanted to just say that today. It's all the same. You do not have to have it. Every now and then I'll share devotionals. So moving right along. So the devotional for today is called Courageous in Trials. And I want to read it. It says, sometimes being a believer takes courage. Y'all type courage in the comments. Jeremiah and Baruch's lives were put in danger by the message the Lord gave them. Jehoiakim was a hard-hearted, evil king. When he heard what was written on a scroll, he burned it and sought to have Jeremiah and Baruch arrested. God protected Jeremiah and Baruch by allowing them to hide from the king's henchmen. And remember, um, it says, but the Lord had hidden them. I'll type that in the comments, but the Lord had hidden them. And when um, I heard that, when we were reading that, I really felt that because I thought about the many times that God had hidden me from certain things, things that could have turned out another way. And years later, I realized like, wow, God literally hid me in that moment. So y'all just take a moment again, drop some hearts in the comments and thank God for his protection, right? So again, it says God protected them by allowing them to hide from the king's henchmen. But even though they were safe by the Lord's protection, y'all type in the comments, I am safe by the Lord's protection. It's literally like the hand of God literally hid me from these situations that could have turned out another way. Y'all type in the comments, but God hid me, but God hid me. I thank God for his protection. He says they still had a task to do that required courage and faith, right? And he said, God told them to write the scroll again. Y'all type in the comments, do it again, right? Even though their lives were in danger, he hid them, but they still had to go forth and do the work that God told them to do with boldness and courage. Y'all type in the comments, I will do what it is that God gave me to do with boldness and courage. Why? Because we know that the enemy can't touch us, right? The enemy, you did too? Mm -hmm. that, that really stood out to me. That really stood out to me. It was so much good stuff today. And God, God told them to write the scroll again. In the ancient world, to speak negatively of the king was dangerous. To rewrite a message the king had already destroyed would have been considered brazen rebellion, right? The word says that he literally, after they read each part, what did it say? He cut it or he cut, he with a knife, he cut off that section of the scroll and he threw it into the fire, section by section. And what stood out to me was section by section. He didn't just take the whole thing. Section by section, he cut off each part. Section by section and literally threw it in the fire and burned up the word of God. And so it's letting us know that to go back and, and, and to rewrite the very thing that he took the time, section by section, to cut off and throw would have been brazen rebellion. But Jeremiah was serving a higher king. Y'all type in the comments, a higher king. He was loyal first and foremost to the Lord. And it makes you think in a situation like that, what would you have done? Where would your, your loyalty, where would your loyalty have lied in that moment, right? Y'all type in the comments, my loyalty is first and foremost with the Lord. He said, serving as his messenger, the Lord's messenger, no matter what the cost to himself might be because he served a higher king, right? There will be times when you need to take a stand for God when doing so isn't popular or advantageous in earthly terms. During those times, courage is needed. Courage to keep going, courage not to waver, and courage to trust God. And may we all have that type of courage. Y'all type in in the comments, I receive it. May we all have the courage to keep going the courage not to waver, and the courage to continue to trust God. Y'all type courage. And so um, this was another reason why I really enjoy this one-year Bible, because each day, um, it looks like every single day, it ha does have a devotional. So again, I'm all for any resources that will allow us to dig deeper, right? To really dig deeper. 
Um, and so there was just a lot to think about, like, you know, what would you have done in a, in a situation like that? Will you stand up for God? Will you stand up for the word of God? And so um, I always say that courage um, and, and fearlessness, and I used to post this a lot, right? Courage and fearlessness is contagious. Do y'all remember seeing that for years? Listen, and then for years, what did I used to type? Um, I'm doing a great work. I will not come down. Anytime I post something, you see me posting something over and over and over again. It's really me talking to myself, reminding myself. And I'm like, Keisha, you need to continue to be bold. You need to continue to be courageous. You need to co continue to show up and do God's work fearless and that's contagious and I don't know how many people said because of your courage because of your boldness because of your fearlessness it calls me like it's contagious right it is contagious courage and fearlessness is is it not true when you really think about it it's 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 uh it's contagious and it just spreads right so may we all continue to be courageous when we're faced with those hard things and so this was titled courageous in trials and just reading that really really blessed me and i wanted to share it with y'all so again um that was a lot to think about listen there was just so much i know there's no way right that you all cannot have something to go into your time of personal devotion with and if nothing else asking yourself the question what are, what areas of scripture do you avoid because it's uncomfortable and then if you feel like you are not courageous pray and ask God pray and ask him and he will and he will do it because um I wasn't always courageous right I wasn't even with doing what we're doing here I was scared and almost hid in a group and so had I done this in a group it would have you know we would have all still been blessed but I was only wanting to do that because I was afraid like what are people going to think you know like what are people like what are people going to think and then when you're live on your page like this like I see and I never pay attention to this and I just happen to look up and see it to make a point there are 43 of us that are on here right now but think of all the people that are watching behind the scenes as a matter of fact y'all say hi y'all type in the comments hello there are people that are behind the scenes that haven't clicked on a video that are watching and that's not easy because you literally feel like you're in front of a window naked literally exposing yourself especially in those times where I'm transparent and sharing things that the Lord puts on my heart to share you know so it's definitely not easy and I almost said well let me go and hide in a group right yeah y'all say hello and I understand that people don't click on into the video for lots of reasons um, so the only time I see who's here is when y'all comment, but I'm glad everyone is here, right? And so let's just say hey um, to those that are watching. Um, so anyway, anyway, I just pray that we're all courageous in that way. Um, so we still have a few more minutes. And um, so there were quite a few um, declarations and also just being reminded of this. It says, um, God's, he said, I will punish him, the king, King Jehoiakim, right? God said, um, I will punish him and his family, right? Punish him and his family and his attendants for their sins. I will pour out on them and all. Okay, so just stopping there. And that just made me think about how. Um, our sin affects everyone, right? Our sin affects our children. It affects our family. And so that's even all the more motivation. Hey, <laughs> I'm glad you're here. I know I never know who's here unless y'all comment. And I say that because um, sometimes I get on the phone with you all and to hear someone say, I've been watching you since you started waking early for his glory in July of, what was it, 2018? And I'm like, what? I never, ever even saw you. It amazes me. Or, yeah, I've been following you for like the last two years. I'm on faithfully every morning. I'm like, what? I never even saw you. Like, the next time, say hello so I know that you're here. So I want to challenge you. If you've been watching us forever and you didn't say hello, just say hi so I'll know that you're here. I just want to say hello. <laughs> that amazes me when I hear that. I'm like, wow. How is that even possible? I never saw you and get excited because they let me know they're watching. Um, yeah, someone that I had never, ever seen even comment on anything. And she's like, yeah, I've been like, what? <laughs> 
Um, so again, getting back to um, our sins, right? That's even all the more motivation for us to put in the work and to repent and to close some doors. And that's what that did. That picture is for me. Every time I think about that, I share with you all that vision that I constantly see in my mind's eye, right? Of me literally like thousands of doors being open and me literally as I'm running down, is it like dominoes? And those doors are literally slamming shut. Like, you know, like the little dominoes. That's, um, hey, Ada. Hi, Doretha. Um, and so that's what that has been like for me, like really putting in the work and closing some doors because I listen, there are some things that I dealt with um, that I know my mother dealt with, her mother dealt with that I do not want my children to deal with. And so our sins, our decisions and what we do affects others. And so for me, I think about my children, right? Um, so that was something to think about. And then in First Timothy, him talking about uh, the problems in the church. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, um, another verse that stood out to me. Uh, in First Timothy, it says, So I advise these young widows to marry again, have children, and take care of their own homes and what I love what stood out to me is that uh, the word own was it was included not other people's homes right we can be so busy meddling and I never said that word before did he say that today meddling in other people's business and it says care for their own homes y'all type in hashtag own then the enemy will not be able to say anything against them for I am afraid that some of them have already gone astray and now follow Satan. And the first thing I thought about is, have I given the enemy anything to say against me? Like, and so I want you all to think about that and ask yourself, what have I given the enemy to say against me? Have I given any the enemy anything to say against me? Um, so it's just lots to think about. The word of God gives us so much to think about. So again, I'll just say this before um, I get ready to hop off and go ahead and share y'all's takeaways. And um, so as we're listening, we always want to um, actively, like mindfully, I'll use the word mindfully, be present and in the moment, not doing other things. Um, definitely, if you can sit up and not be laying in bed where you're tempted to fall asleep, just being alert. And, and I say that because, can I just say this, uh, the journey was hard for me at first. And I feel like um, before, in the beginning, coming on the lives, if you, if you can remember, I used to come on literally dragging. I would be on live yawning. I always had like that big giant cup of coffee. Hey, y'all, good morning. Y'all probably didn't realize it. But I, at some point, started feeling like I'm showing up and was dragging and showing up anyhow right you say you can't show up <laughs> before the lord just anyhow and so i began to challenge myself and can i be transparent i didn't always wash my face and brush my teeth that was back then i would literally because it was so early and it was a challenge for me dragging on here this was like all of that july through december 2018 17 for sure and i began to challenge myself get up <laughs> wash your face brush your teeth get dressed and stop showing up anyhow and so i want to challenge you all to do that you know when you come on it's okay if you're in bed but maybe be sitting up do whatever you need to do splash some cold water on your face and just challenge yourself to not show up just anyhow i just feel like the lord has wanted me to share that and it's for somebody maybe not for all of you um, but for someone, because it's easy when you do that. How many of you have probably fallen back to sleep in the middle of listening and reading, right? Um, yeah, it is. And, and that's why I'm, I'm being transparent. It was a challenge for me as well. You know, it was. So I get it. I understand. But I took the challenge when I felt like the Lord was challenging me um, to kind of sh not show up that way. I said, okay. And I took the challenge. And for me, um, washing my face in cold water like completely don't even touch the hot water cold water literally is what helped me i and still now even all these years later i still wash my face only in the morning in cold water and it wakes me up and 
not that this is that important but i think it even helps when y'all like you look so refreshed and i shared this with you all like the cold water it does something it's what helps me to look refreshed so i literally wash my face in cold water and i'm like lord i don't want to just show up anyhow anymore and so i just want to challenge that <clears throat> and the last thing as we're reading we're listening <clears throat> and we're looking for declarations and i'm so glad y'all are saying oh this is me so glad it's not just me <laughs> listen <clears throat> so glad it's not just me and i don't think anyone would <laughs> yeah it's the cold water it is how i wash my face in cold water i get up earlier than i used to because y'all when i if i had to be on at 4 30 now i'm not talking about now but this was in the beginning because it was it was a struggle i'd be lying if it wasn't um there were times and i used to share this with you all do y'all remember i'm like y'all won't believe i just woke up at 4 20 and God would literally stop the time just for me. He would stop the time just for me because I could literally wake up and get out of my bed at 420 and I'm on live at 430 talking about welcome morning, welcome to wake here early for his glory. I'm like, God I had to have stopped the time because there's just no way. <laughs> so I would uh, wake up late. Do y'all remember? <laughs> you see me like, and what, what do we always say? She got up, I made it. Oh, y'all, it was funny. But the thing is, I kept going, even in all of that frustration, feeling like, well, this is ridiculous. It's, why do we have to do this at 5, 4.30 in the morning? Then I'd be on, good morning, because I know how to put what I'm feeling <laughs> to the side, right? Because my flesh is not the boss of me. Can y'all imagine if I showed up grumpy every day? Like, no, you can't do that. So... And it's not even about being fake and phony. It's all about, number one, knowing how to master your emotions. And that's something that I had to practice. Because if not, I would have been on here grumbling and complaining. I just woke up at 420. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> right? We're not doing that. You're not showing up representing God with that nasty attitude. So, you know, we're not doing that. And so I would still show up. And now it's so easy. It's like, it's so easy. It's, it's not easy. Can I just say, I continue to keep going, and, and it's the, the grace, the grace, it's not that it's easy, it's God's grace, the grace of God, nothing but that, because I know once that grace lifts, it will no longer be this easy, so let me not say it's easy, because I believe that's, that's not true, it's not easy, um, but why exactly are you asking me? God said 430, but if you're asking me, personally because God said 4 30 but if you're asking you would have like I was asking the same thing why not five why not 5 30 so why I have no idea but um why did he say 4 30 I have no idea but did he say 4 30 yes because would I have chosen 4 30 in my right mind absolutely not <laughs> you know how many times I wanted to change this to 5 30 the kids are like, why don't you change it to 530? You wake up in the middle of the night to go live. <laughs> the kids call it the middle of the night. I say it's early morning. They say, no, it's the middle of the night. I'm like, no, it's early morning. <laughs> um, it's definitely taste God's grace. Absolutely. Absolutely. So anyway, I think we're done. We were just talking. Um, the, another, the last verse that stood out to me was in Psalms, starting at verse 33. It says, and my time is almost up. It says, but I will never, even, okay, then I will punish. So even beginning talking about having to punish us for our disobedience. Oh, um, no, it's for, oh, it's 525 my time. And listen, can we do this? Can we just take a moment? Oh, yeah. Um, hold on. Hold on. Let me see if I can find it. Hold on. Hold on. I can't find it. And yes, I have my pajama pants on. I can't find it. I know it's in that um, thing. I printed out all the verses that showed about, talked about early morning and waking up early and literally studied those. Um, and I, I, did, I would have taken more time to look, but I got my pajama pants on. Shh, don't, shh. <laughs> shh. I didn't put my pants on today. So anyway, it's, this is real life. I was like, oh, hold on. And so I will find it and I will see if I can take it to Staples and scan what I have. 
um, and then I'll, I'll share it into the group and the sisters in the word groups because I literally study that and that helped me as well, um, looking up all of those verses. My husband says it, yeah, they, yeah, Anthony and the kids say it's in the middle of the night. So we're done. I have to hop off of here. Um, but because I know y'all saw me on the camera, I didn't want to dig for it, but I will pull it out. Um, and that was from a few years ago when I did that study because it really helped me and with getting up early because my mind just was just like, why? Why are we doing this this early? And oh, I was going to say, let's just drop some hearts in the comments for those. Whenever I hear you all say that you all wake up at 3.30 to tune in, I think that is absolutely amazing. So can we just listen, if, let, we can all celebrate all of us for showing up, but let's just celebrate those of you where it is only 4.27 your time. Because listen, that is a big deal. I would not, back then, like, before now, I would not have been up at 3.30 nothing <laughs> on anybody's live reading nothing um, because, no, I would not have. So I think that is absolutely amazing. I think it's absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing that you are showing up at 3.30 to 4.30 reading the Word of God with us. Listen, celebrate yourself celebrate yourself i think that's absolutely amazing and whenever listen i think that's amazing because the earliest when i the earliest i would be on someone's live was at six o'clock i remembered when i started showing up on facebook following someone that was praying on live she would be live at six o'clock and i would be up faithfully and that was early and i yes i would be up in my bed still i would still be in bed <laughs> Um, sometimes falling asleep so I get it and so that's why I know you know where you all are and I can challenge you um, but yeah 330 that's amazing all right uh, yes yes um, I don't see it breaking up on my end so I'm not sure what's happening but my time is up it's 528 I need to go um, and, and I know I didn't do a whole lot of teaching anything but I pray that something I said today blessed you all and gave you a lot to think about uh in your time of personal devotion and we are done my time is up you set your alarm at 4 20 but still lay down until almost 4 30 listen it's all right listen it's all right a challenge it's called a challenge for a reason you know it's not like you'll be able to just you know it'll it'll take time just pray and ask god to help you and he will hashtag ask me how i know Oh, you're welcome. And I'll go look for that document. Did y'all see my pajama pants? <laughs> They're black. So y'all probably didn't even, y'all wouldn't have even known if I didn't tell you. Um, black is my favorite color. Almost all of my pajamas, everything is just black, 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 black. For no other reason than I like black. <laughs> they always bless you. Oh, praise God. Praise God. And then it probably helps that I'm on happy and smiling, right? Because can y'all imagine if I was grumpy? Good morning. It's early. Let's just read the Bible. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, you didn't notice? Okay, good. <laughs> good, good, good. So anyway, I don't have my pajamas on every day. It's just today. Um, I, I usually lay out my clothes and it was dark because I try not to wake Anthony up and I couldn't find my pants. Um, and I forgot to, to you I tried to use I listen anyway y'all don't need to know all that I just didn't want to wake him up so I was just like oh I guess I'll keep my pajama pants on today <laughs> uh well thank you thank you thank you yeah I try to be quiet I know he's like why do you wake up in the middle of the night like he doesn't they don't understand <laughs> they don't they don't they don't understand and it's okay and see that's the thing sometimes God will give us things to do that even your family won't understand your family will even think it doesn't make sense your own family not that they think that I'm crazy crazy literally but they're like why that time <laughs> why I'm like, because God said so <laughs> so even still all these years later they're like why that time <laughs> And so just a little funny, we're just talking now. And so usually by the time they, they wake up, um, which is usually uh, about eight. Anyway, all that to say, a lot of times I'm up. And so I greet them, good morning, because I've been up since 3.30. And they're like, 
it's early. It's only 7.30. It's only 8 o'clock and you're yelling. <laughs> I'm like, good morning. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I've been up for five hours already. Or, oh, I'm sorry. I've been up for four hours already. They're like, you're yelling. And I'm not all the way up. I'm just looking for the bathroom door. <laughs> Like, I'm just trying to go to the bathroom, like, <laughs> and you're yelling. And so I'm just laughing and just talking to y'all. <laughs> and yeah, that's literally even still all these years later. They're like, why are you yelling? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I've been up. <laughs> I got, and a lot of times I'm like, I went to the grocery store, came back home. <laughs> I went live once, sometimes two times. <laughs> and they're like, Zariah is the one she's she's I wouldn't say she's grumpy but yeah she's the grumpiest when she wakes up and so she's the main one where I try to be really intentional to whisper and so when I started whispering then she said why are you whispering and I'm like you told me I'm loud when I greet y'all and now I'm trying to whisper and now you're asking me why are you whispering these kids these kids <laughs> But yeah, she's the only one, like literally one eye open. And she's walking in the hall like this, like really literally. I'm like, you know where the bathroom is? <laughs> and Miles and AJ, they, they've gotten used to it, like whatever. She yells. All right, y'all, I'm past my time. It was so nice just getting to chat and talk to y'all. Pray that uh, you took something away. So let's all go into our times of personal devotion. I'm about to start walking and reading your comments while I'm walking because that makes the time go by faster and then I'm going to sit and since my time is up um kind of avoiding the area of scripture dealing with our parents I'm going to sit and sit in that and deal with that today and just um, see what the Lord will have me do right because to be honest um just a moment of transparency I can't remember the last time I spoke to my mother it's been years it has been years, um, and I think it's even been years since we last talked about this um, when I kind of shared. All right, Anthony's up now. My time is really up. That means it's time to go for real now. Bye, y'all.